Question 2, A. Predict and explain the variation in the enthalpy change of hydration for the ions fluoride, chloride, bromide, and iodine. So enthalpy change of hydration, we need to know that is the gases ion that dissolve in water. Means it will be the attractions between the ion and the water's form. So the attractions names we call ion dipole forces. So it's the, uh, the anion now with the water. So because the water only uh, has dipole, right? And uh, ion is a charged particle. So the attractions, so we name that as ion dipole attractions. So now these attractions will affect by the size of the uh, halides. So we know that when down the group, the size of the uh, halide, uh, so it's getting larger. And when it's getting larger, the attractions of these uh, ions to the water is actually weaker. So that, that's the, the, the relations, right? Because uh, it has more shielding, right? So it means larger, more electron shell, more shielding. So attractions uh, of these uh, anions towards the water uh, is uh, obviously weaker. So this is the ideas that you must have before you answer uh, this question, right? So that's why we get this answer. Uh, the hydration, uh, the hydration enthalpies for the fluoride, chloride, uh, bromide, and iodide, so we become less exo. Means uh, because the attraction is weaker, the uh, these energies that release from this uh, bonds formation is uh, lesser. So that's why we say less exo. Uh, attractions weaker means release less energy so it's less exo down the group so why uh, its only reason is the ionic radius because the ionic radius increases down the group and the ion dipole forces to the water is weaker part b figure 2.1 shows a uh, incomplete energy uh, cycle involving calcium fluoride so we have this uh, energy cycle um, so uh, what is asking complete the uh, line D uh, included state symbol very easy uh, so let's look at this uh, cycle uh, so we have uh, this line D uh, before that uh, let's check uh, so it's actually started with this A uh, we have a uh, calcium solid and foreign gas after that, uh, this calcium will form calcium gases ion and the fluorine will form the fluoride gases ion. So after that, uh, these uh, gases ion will form the, uh, this uh, D. D eh? And uh, after that, okay, we have to look at this. Uh, this enthalpy process 2. What is the, the enthalpies that involve? So here is clearly stated is the hydration enthalpy for this calcium ion and the fluoride. Okay, so we know that the gases ions that produce from the calcium and fluorine here will dissolve in water and form the species in the line D. So when the gases ions dissolve, so it will form aqueous solution. So you just need to put calcium to aqueous and the fluoride aqueous. So remember here need to times two, right? So because two moles of uh, gases fluoride ion uh, is dissolved in water, so you have to follow this uh, this ratio. Okay, so this one done. Now uh, part two. The value of the enthalpy change for process 1 can be calculated using the values of 5 others enthalpy change which are not referred to the figure 2.1. Again, process 1 is this, this one. From the K 
calcium metal and the foreign gas so it's from the gases ions of calcium and this uh, foreign so it's involved five enthalpy so now you need to list out what are the enthalpies that involve uh, let's start with the calcium okay, calcium will first undergo atomization okay, this one after it's atomized uh, so the gaseous atom of calcium will undergo ionization so it will undergo first ionization and the second ionization so here already three one two three and the foreign will undergo the atomization as well so it's two times of this uh, atomization so it's from uh, two gases atom of foreign and this foreign gases atom will gain electron gains electron to form the fluoride so two moles of gases foreign uh, atom will gain two moles of uh, electrons so uh, two moles of electrons here to form the two moles of uh, gases ion fluoride okay now there are another two atomization of foreign and the electron affinity of foreign means the foreign that gains electron so the energies that release or the energy uh, the enthalpy change we call electron affinity so you just need to name all these uh, enthalpy uh, so uh, atomization energy of calcium atomization energy of foreign the first two first and uh, first and second ionization of calcium and the first electron affinity of foreign okay, ea1 part three define ladies energy so the energies change or energy released uh, when gases ions come together to form one mode of the solid like this under standard condition uh, so it must be the gases ions uh, you can say uh, is reacts or combine uh, to form one mode uh, this is very important must be one mode of solid like this okay under standard conditions um, so part four completes the expression to give the Method, mathematical relation between the lattice energy of calcium fluoride and the enthalpy change uh, in the process uh, one and three. Uh, so let's uh, refer back to this uh, diagram. Uh, as you can see here, um, process one and three. Okay, so it's here and here. And uh, we can we can get the latest energies from the gases ion you can see here this one when the gases ions are combined it will form the this uh, uh, solid uh, lattice so means these calcium gases ions and the fluoride gases ion they will combine and form this calcium fluoride solid so this is a solid lattice so means this part pointing down follow this this arrow the red arrow so uh, this is the latest energy and from here you can see a small head cycle so means the uh, this uh, enthalpy change in the process one plus the latest energy is equal to the enthalpy change in the process three here so which is uh, this value uh, but uh, value is not really metals now uh, we just want expression so means you need to take this uh, endowment right this uh, the endowments that uh, involved okay, and this endowment and try to find the relation okay so as I told you just now there is a head cycle so uh, latest energy plus plus uh, plus this one 
so means this so it's equal to the this formations of the calcium fluoride solid okay equal to this so this is their relation huh? it's a head cycle right so after that uh, rearrange bring this one to right so you get uh, this expression so the formations of this uh, calcium fluoride okay minus the formations of calcium two gases ion minus the two times of formations of the fluoride gases ion right so this is the expression huh? you just get from this uh, this uh, small head cycle right so you get this answer part c use the data uh, from table 2.1 to calculate the value uh, for the hydration uh, energy or endowpy of the forex ion uh, this one is quite uh, quite straightforward it's quite easy uh, first you need to uh, use this one uh, this equation okay, this is very important uh, Delta X solution equal to the this uh, hydration enthalpy uh, minus the latest energy. So this is the one that you must use. Okay, so uh, the solutions uh, Delta X solution already given, so it's thirty, right? So it's here. And uh, because the question uh, wants you to calculate the hydration enthalpy for forex, okay? Remember, the hydration enthalpy uh, is the sum of the cation and anion. The cation is given here. This one in this table, and there'll be change of hydration of calcium gases ion. Okay, so it's negative one six five zero plus two times of the hydration and B of four. Right? Okay, then minus latest energy. Uh, latest energy is uh, not really here, right? So you need to, uh, of course, overall is given, uh, but uh, you know, uh, so you still need to get it from the this uh, head cycle huh? okay, so this is the latest energy yeah right latest energy uh, and this one we know that is uh, the enthalpy change in process one plus latest energy minus the enthalpy change in process two as i told you just now okay so from the table uh, the process one is yeah the process one Okay, process one is uh, one three nine uh, five. Uh, so this is the one that given, and enthalpy change of formations of four right already given, right? So we just use this one. Okay, so we can get the latest energy. Is it? Uh, so we just uh, use these two values. Okay, so means uh, it's actually one three five nine plus latest energy equal to negative one two one four. Uh, so then we can get the actual values of latest energy that's okay that's a value so latest energy uh, plus uh, 1395 equal to this uh, negative 1214 uh, this is the one that we get from the figures right so uh, latest energy you will get negative 2609 so uh, once you get this then it's easy so you just need to rearrange. Uh, you get the hydration's NLP for the four right uh, is negative four seven three kilojoule per mole. Part D, define entropy. Uh, this one is uh, very simple. Uh, numbers of possible arrangement of particles in a system. Uh, so means uh, it can be a uh, energy. It can be in terms of energy. It can in terms of particle. It just how many ways for it to uh, arrange uh, more arrangement or more uh, ways uh, so means uh, entropy is larger for example the entropy of gas is much larger than the solid because gas is has more arrangement it can go to many directions but the solid uh, is just fixed position so therefore uh, entropy is less uh, that's the meaning okay part e um, so uh, we have this uh, 298 Kelvin uh, and the uh, gives free energy uh, given for the solutions of compound T is uh, positive 6 kJ per mole. The enthalpy change of solutions uh, of compound T also given 
so it's positive 30 kilojoule per mole uh, at the same temperature. Calculate the value of entropy uh, for this solution uh, of compound T at the same temperature. Uh, first, you need to use the delta G equal to delta H minus T delta S. This is very important uh, because now it's asking the delta S, so you need to convert uh, the kilojoule to joule. Okay, because the Gibbs and the enthalpy, they're both in kilojoule per mole. So you need to convert the kilojoule to joule because the entropy is in joule. So means uh, the 6 need to times 1000, so 6000. So enthalpy also need to times uh, 1000, become 30,000. So minus T is the temperature that is mentioned, 298 okay, times delta S. Rearrange, so you get this. Uh, delta S, the entropy change is uh, positive 80.5. Right, means after it dissolves, uh, the randomness uh, or the way that is arranged is more. Uh, because the ions uh, uh, is uh, uh, move more freely uh, compared to the solid. Right, this is the indicators, you know. Now, uh, last part. Predict whether compound T becomes more or less soluble uh, as the water is heated okay, from 298 Kelvin to 360 Kelvin. Uh, so this one you need to use uh, Gibbs equations again. Uh, first you need to know uh, the enthalpy is endo or exo. Okay, in this question enthalpy is endo, uh, uh, it's positive here. And the uh, entropy just calculated is endo. So when temperature increases, because the delta S is endo, so when we minus minus uh, this uh, uh, T delta S, because temperature increases, means T delta S also will increase. So now delta H is minus a larger value. Eventually, the Gibbs will be more negative. When the Gibbs is more, more negative, means it's more spontaneous and it can dissolve more. Uh, that's a relation. So what you need to say is uh, the compound T become more soluble. Why? Because the T delta S is positive. It just because T delta is positive, when temperature increase, it become larger value. The delta H minus a larger value, so eventually it will be more negative. I mean the delta G, right? So it's more spontaneous. Okay, that's all. Thank you.